You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, you know who I am. I am Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And today I am broadcasting from simply, what word can I use? Magnificent to Atlanta, Georgia, with just a little touch of Southern flavor. I know you love that. And I can truly say with all of the faith that's on the inside of me, that if you are listening to this recording, it's a setup. You better watch out. You know why? Because the spirit of God has attracted you here so that you can receive uh, the answers, the solution, the wisdom that you've been praying about. So I'm excited for you. I really want to call this a spiritual uh, breakthrough how to hour. Well, it is a a beautiful day here in Atlanta. It is summertime and the living is easy, or at least it feels that way. And uh, I have a great show in store for you. But before I get to that, let me just say uh, from the bottom of my heart how, how honored I feel and what a privilege it is for me each week to come into your home, come into your heart, come into your inner space. And I never take that for granted because this show is all about bringing you hope, motivation and inspiration, but how to's to move you from where you are to where you desire to be. And I just had to say that up front. Wow. Do I have a juicy show in store for you today? It's going to be in two parts. So the first part is I'm going to be answering emails uh, that some of you sent me and i um, excited about that. And the second part, you better stay tuned. You better not hit stop uh, on your uh, iPhone or uh, on your iPad, but you, you need to listen to the entire show because my very special guest is Simon T. Bailey. He says T stands for terrific and he is, and he's going to be talking about brilliant living, 31 insights to creating an awesome life. I mean, he has a remarkable story. Uh, He was the former sales director at Disney Institute, you know, Disney World. And he left that job to pursue becoming an entrepreneur. And I think it's about 15 years later that he is a multimillionaire. Uh, he, He has a great story. But more importantly, I love Simon because he has great how to's. So that's who we're going to be talking to later on. Uh, And I say listen to the entire show because, you know, all it takes is one word from God, one aha moment or I knew that. But now I really know it to really change what you desire. Okay, how many of you guys have been following me on social media? Let me see your hands. I think Sabrina, my assistant, says that I've been receiving a lot of messages. So if you want to see me in a different light, how about on Twitter, LOA Constance, Facebook, Coach with Constance, and Instagram, CL Arnold 11. So you could see me, uh, what I'm doing, pictures, um, mantras, and quotes that I share on a daily basis. So check that out. And then the new Law of Attraction magazine is is out and uh, my dear friend Dr. Dennis Kimbrough is featured on the cover of the magazine. Uh, He is uh, talking about won't nothing attract everything and it's really awesome. I mean Jules does a fantastic job 
are putting this magazine together. It's a free digital read and has very powerful articles. It's colorful. It's full of different experts sharing information and informative. So go to LOA Radio Network dot com and just click on um, LOA Magazine and check it out. And then lastly, are you ready? August 11th, 12th and 13th. Um, my annual breakthrough spiritual encounter how to conference. I, I guess that's what I'm going to call it. And I'm really going to be working with you one on one up close and personal. I'm going to help you to find out what's been holding me back. Why do I keep doing the same thing uh, and really shift and change paradigms? Uh, And a paradigm is nothing more than a summary of your beliefs, your experiences, etc. Because ladies and gentlemen, really until you change your beliefs, because most of them are really subconscious, you will almost over time self-sabotage those powerful intentions that you have. And I've just heard recently from some of the people who came to my last conference and some of the things that they said has manifested in their life as a direct result of the conference have been a more passionate marriage. All of you married people, you want that, don't you? Um, One lady has really expanded. She now has three businesses that are profitable uh, in two different cities. Of course, you heard Jamie and Jamie sent me some pictures the other day of her weight release of 100 pounds. And I did not recognize her. She released. She had that aha moment in the conference and she released 100 pounds. Um, people have gotten very clear on what they want. Uh, another one of my clients, Margie, she sent me some information. She's now coaching. She's going to be speaking at some upcoming conferences, etc. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, nobody does it alone. So as I said last week, I have, how many slots left? Openings. I I don't like the word slots. Maybe 11. So we have people coming all the way from Japan. What's your excuse? So it's an investment in yourself. So go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Check it out. I was just down at the Western Peachtree Plaza Hotel, the tallest building uh, hotel in Atlanta. And I met with the the lady who is the event planner and, uh, uh, you know, just laid out some things to her as to how I want things to look and how I want to have the meet and greet, etc. So check it out. I would love to mentor you. I would love to help you begin creating a life beyond your wildest dreams. Okay. Here we go. This is the first email. You know, I get so many emails, but I know that a lot of you could relate to this. Dear Constance, I am a millennial and I know that you're always kidding and talking about us. I am, but I love you guys. And I'm writing in because I'm really searching for my purpose. I do not feel like my life is fulfilling. I know that there is something greater for me. How many of you can relate to that? I am an administrative assistant for a governmental agency and I am so bored. I have so many more talents that I could be using. How can I find out my purpose? I see so many other people who seem to be living life on purpose. And here I am stuck at my job. Anybody ever felt like that? I really love working with children and have some great ideas about how to help young children. Constance, you always seem so excited. I wonder what did you do to find your purpose? Wow, this is just like one of the main questions uh, that I get asked all of the time about how can I find my purpose? And let me just give you some general uh, principles, my dear. Uh, And to any of you who might be struggling with, oh, my God, what's my purpose? The first thing is your purpose is always unfolding in your life. 
even on your current job or in your current circumstance. So wherever you are and whatever your current circumstances are, your purpose is unfolding. It may not seem like it. You may not feel it, uh, but it is. So just relax in that, you know, and that's just not easy. So in my life, I had two degrees, one in business and one in counseling. And for years, I didn't use my counseling degree. And I worked at a major Fortune 500 company, and I was so frustrated. And I just kept saying, God, I, I, I knew, I know that there's more. Why am I sitting behind this computer? What you know, and I would say I should be speaking more. I should be in front of people. Um, I didn't know that things were unfolding for me. And so at that time, what God was working in me was patience, organizational skills, uh, integrity, how to be how to be disciplined, but I didn't want nothing to do with it. How many of you can feel me? So the first thing is that purpose is always unfolding in your current situation and in your current life. And I just, I just want you to look around and see who you are becoming because had I not really developed those characteristics, I would not be able to carry the weight of success and enjoy it. You know, a lot of people get a lot of money, they get successful quick, they have all this fame, and it crushes them because they have never been prepared for that kind of notoriety. Okay, the second thing is so, my dear, instead of being frustrated, like I said, take a look at the inner work that's being accomplished on the inside of you. How can you become uh, more skilled at what you are doing administratively? What classes can you take? I would say really take advantage uh, of the position that you are in. If they do pay training, I would really uh, open myself up to all of that in order to support what is ahead for you. So as I said early in my own life, uh, what was being worked in me was how to be business savvy, organizational skills, because I wasn't that organized, discipline in my writing and how to deal with fear. You know, the very interesting thing is, had I never worked in the school system, I would not have been a match for my first major contracts because my first major contracts were about dealing with single moms, women who were on on welfare or who had been displaced employment wise. Um, and since I didn't have children, I didn't have that experience. But working in the school system helped me to understand behaviorally what was going on with these single mom and their children. But I was frustrated. Oh, God, here I am at the school system and I should be doing this. But God was what unfolding my purpose. So for the, for those of you who right now know that there are other things to come, you know, I don't even want to say greater because had I really rested in and embraced where I was in the school system, it was great for that time. The Bible talks about going from glory to glory. So that's what you're doing, going from glory to glory. So for the lady who wrote in, I have some questions for you. You say you love children and that's your passion. So while you are still on your on your job, I want you to... Uh, ask yourself these questions. Have you written down your ideas? Can you begin volunteering and really positioning yourself in the lives of children? For example, after school programs where you could work boys and girls club. You said you wanted younger children, homeless shelters and fostering agencies. Any place where you can share, any place where you can volunteer, uh, churches, uh, other religious organizations, any place where you can position yourself to share some of the solutions that you do have will begin to bring to you a, a sense of fulfillment and contributions. And so see, finding your purpose is not necessarily about fame and money. It's about your ability 
to share the gifts and the talents that you have make a contribution to the world. So that's what I would suggest um, that you do. Uh, another principle, discovering your purpose is an unfolding process. And if you don't enjoy it, you're going to be frustrated. So so really, you got to kind of rest in. I was created for a time just just as this. I don't really understand where I am and begin to take joy in where you are. How can you still be joyful where you are? are I got that out <laughs> where while you are. A, a, a beginning to nurture, provide solutions, be around children. Before anybody knew my name, I began to just uh, conduct small support groups, small therapy groups. I began to speak to networking organizations, to rotary clubs, to anybody that would hear me really and did not get paid for it because what was I doing? Developing my skill. I was making a contribution. Um, and really, it made my life really more fulfilled. And I wasn't as anxious about hurrying up and getting out of the school system. So I'm going to say to you that that's what I'm going to suggest that you do. And another thing I want to say is that purpose may not mean what some people call success, prosperity or, or wealth. It may mean that, but it does bring fulfillment and a sense of contribution, like I just said. And the interesting thing is like when you're in like a vibration of fulfillment, other creative ideas might come to you while you are sitting at your desk doing your administrative work that may or may not even be related to working with children because you're in the vibration of giving. You're in the vibration of helping. You're in the vibration of serving. And so that opens you up to the unlimited supply of wisdom that's on the inside of you. And so as long as you are like I was complaining and grumbling and just on Monday mornings, oh God, I know that there's more for me and just being like a little drama queen, not like I was a drama queen. It, it really puts up the resistance for for what God has for you to come into your life. So prepare for it. Um, I began to uh, design modules in training women. You know, I began to every evening when I would get like in my little mood, I would just begin to type up. What can I begin to share with women? And the first thing that I typed up was self-esteem module and gave some exercises of what that looked like so that when opportunity presented itself to me, I was really ready. And so you can't be bored with that. You know, that's what I would say uh, to you. Let's see. Um, and so for those of you who don't know, she knew she knows that she wants to work with children. But if you don't know that, I'm going to say, take a look at what you love, what moves you, what causes uh, in the world really move you. It might be um the climate environment, it might be uh, politics, you know, what, what would you love doing, even though you may not get paid for it? Uh, and, and you know what you're gifted at. As I, as I said before, you could wake me up in the middle of the night and I can start teaching. I can start sharing. <laughs> I can start giving you info. Why? Because that's my gift and my talent uh, that uh, God has deposited on the inside of me. And I think lastly, I'm going to say you got to trust God and the universe. Know that all things are working together for your good, that your purpose is unfolding every day, that you are sharpening your talents and your skills right where you are. You are becoming the person that you need to become in order to support uh, 
the, the, the big purpose and the big vision that God has for you. I know so many successful people and they have, well, all of this fame, but they're not happy. They're worried about their money. They're worried about, um, am I going to stay on the top? They don't trust people. They feel isolated. You know, they feel alone. Uh, but I am so glad that I allow the spirit eventually to just deal with me so that I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm enjoying this season in my life. And so I hope that my experience and the principles that I shared with you have helped you. Okay, let's see. I have one more question. Uh, let's see. I think I do have time. Next question is, is from a male. And you know, it's so interesting. I looked at some of the demographics of my show on blog talk because you know we're on I think it's 38 internet stations you know you can listen to me all kinds of ways Stitcher, iTunes, uh, blog talk, iHeart, uh, Speaker, uh, Blueberry you know just all kinds of things and it's interesting because I think my demographics is, is that 49% male 49% 50% female and I, I didn't realize it at the time, but I have a lot of alpha males, analytical men who come on my show. And, and this is a reflection of that. So this is from a male. He said, Constance, I love your show. Thank you so much. Sometimes I just saturate myself with it as I'm at the gym working out with the guys. Then he says, I love that you have a lot of alpha males who share how to's as as I am a real male and very analytical. My issue is that I feel like I'm, I, I need a mentor and I do not have one or a role model. What can I do to find a male mentor? Wow, that's a very interesting question, uh, my brothers. Thank you so much for, for sending that in. You know, and this is just my belief as, as a psychotherapist and as a spiritual woman for years. You know, I believe that there are some things that only a man can tell and model for another man. I think that men can model for older men can model for younger men, you know, how they should act, who they should be and what they should do. And I could get into a lot of stats, but I'm just going to get right to it. Um, my brother, I'm going to say to you uh, that I think that you can get involved in some male organizations where there, there are, are potential male mentors that might be there for you. Football. Uh, you know, there are a lot of male service organizations, fraternities. Uh, I'm going to say get into the, some alpha male led business groups where maybe the presenter or the organiz organizer is, is is a alpha male in those groups where you connect, where you can connect with men. Because, you know, you guys, you don't like to ask questions, but every man knows that in order to be successful in business and in life, you cannot do it alone. Um, I shared the example of I was with a friend the other day and I knew he was going the wrong way. He wouldn't even use his GPS. I'm like, I said to myself, oh, well, we in for a scenic ride. And uh, I guess it's just that male ego, which I love, by the way. Um, and, and so get involved in some alpha male mastermind groups and begin to connect with the men. And by connect, you know, just say, hey, you know, um, it sounds like from your email, I don't really have a father figure and I'm just really trying to connect with other successful males. I had one of my clients to really um, shadow a, a male that was in business. And the interesting thing is successful men, they love it when another guy comes up to them and say, hey, man, I really like what you're doing. I really admire your work. I would really like to just spend maybe 30 minutes with you to hear your story about some of the things that you did. You know, men love that they might take you golfing. So this particular client of mine who was in college and about to graduate, he um, went to this guy's office and the guy just really 
um, liked him and began mentoring him and helping him. But the interesting thing is he had to ask. And so I'm going to say you need to really uh, put away your pride and just ask, you know, I would like to get to know you. What processes did you implement in order to be a successful man? I tell men, talk to men who have been married for 10, 15, 20 years. You know, how did you sustain a happy marriage? What was your mindset? What are some things that I could learn from you as a male that could help me in my current relationship? So the big word here is A-S-K, ask for help. All right, Uh, a chamber of commerce is a great way to really uh, come in contact with other males. Uh, A lot of times they have great uh, entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs who come in and share their success story, etc. And so these are all places where you position yourself. But you have to, like I said earlier, ASK, you have to ask for help. I'm going to say uh, meetup groups. Boy, if, if anybody internationally or in the U.S., meetup groups are really, really powerful. Any group, any area that you are interested in, they have meetup groups for it. So if, you know, it sounds like you like working out at the gym, you may want to uh, get involved with some bodybuilding, male bodybuilding meetup groups or, or something along those lines or or male football groups, you know, anything like that uh, where you can position yourself to be open to other males. And, you know, I just believe in that whatever you don't get in the natural sense, God gives you in the spiritual. And so even though I I can't tell from your email, you may not be connected to your biological father. I don't know what the reason is for that, that God would give you in the spirit. And by that, I mean, he would give you another person that biologically is not even related to you. You know, I'm exhibiting, look at me, James Power is my mentor. You know, so so I don't I don't have my biological father, but then I have my spiritual father and mentor because what God provided. So God wants to provide to you the relationship and the resources, um, my brother. You know, for for what you need that will help escort you into your purpose and your destiny. Uh, what else? Strong males. I mean, there are certain churches that that have a lot of, um, uh, you know, male members, you might want to take a look at that. Uh, I know T.D. Jakes has just, you know, for men only conferences. And it's so interesting, you know, when he's teaching and, you know, you guys, they do woo, woo, woo. And it's just that male dominance in the room. And, you know, and it's pretty cool. So, you know, just position yourself. Don't, don't isolate, um, you know, reach out for help explore you know god has unlimited resources and resources would be people who are willing and ready to help you to move toward your purpose and your destiny and that's my story (laughs) and i'm sticking to it so i hope that that um really bless all of you who are listening, even though you didn't send in the email. The first one was on purpose and and the second one was, you know, how can this person be connected? Okay, let's just say if this this email was from a female, how can you be, be connected to more women? You know, the same kind of thing, get involved in organizations uh, that women would be involved in, get involved in exercise classes. I mean, what do women do? Where do they go? Uh, women's networking, business networking groups, those kinds of things. And just tell people, wow, I'm really, I really admire you. I, I really um, look up to you, etc. And just begin to ask for help. You know, a lot of times shame uh, keeps us back or feeling that we can do it alone. I'm always intrigued by the fact that people are still saying, Constance, 
I thought that I could do it by myself. And you hear me say every week, nobody does it by themselves because we were created, I believe, to be dependent on God or higher power and interdependent with other people. There is something very powerful about collaboration. There's something very powerful about um, coming together in agreement uh, over a project or over a person's life. It's something very awesome about bringing uh, the strengths and the talents and the wisdom and brainstorming with others in order to enhance and increase your life. So I know that was a blessing to you. And uh, so I'm going to go. I just dropped my pad. Did you hear that? (laughs) I'm going to go to uh, these quick commercials and then I'm going to be back with uh, Simon Terrific Bailey. So stay tuned. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. Well, I am back and I'm really excited about my guest today. And I know you're saying, Constance, you're always excited and you're exactly right. Um, My very special guest today is Simon T. Bailey. The T stands for terrific, if I recall. Uh, He is uh, the top selling author of seven books and the creator of the Shift Your Brilliant System, which is a personal development program that takes individuals and organizations on a transformation, a journey to create a brilliant life or business. He is one of America's top 10 most book corporate and association speakers on change, leadership and customer service. He's worked with over 1500 organizations has, and has impacted 2 million people uh, in 45 countries. He has a new book out, Brilliant Living, 31 Insights to Creating an Awesome Life. So Simon, terrific Bailey. Welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Thank you so much for having me. So good to be with you. Yeah. Well, how have you been? It's been about five years. I've been doing awesome. No complaints. Well, good. Let's talk about your new book, Brilliant Living. I read it last night, 31 Insights to Creating an Awesome Life. Well, I wrote it. uh, I was in Italy a couple of years ago, and I was walking around Rome, and it just hit me that there's got to be a way to teach people how to live an awesome life in two minutes or less. So each insight was born out of a hardship, was born out of failure, was born out of me working all over the world, 45 countries, and I started to notice different patterns. And I said, what if I can equip people to help them spiritually, to help them financially, to help them with a wellness standpoint? So much of what you read last night was, was really born out of that experience. Well, I love it. So, so let's share with the listeners. I'm a big how-to person. Some, uh, some of the insights. There are so many. I ha- I have some favorites, but you choose some. And I love Not the I, I, I love the way you share, and then you give a decree. Why did you write? Why did you decree after you really share what the principle is? I love that a principle. Because language is the software of the mind. The average person uses two to 3,000 words, but if we drill down even more, there are 200 to 300 words that we use on an ongoing basis, 
And words carry energy. So when we become very mindful of our words, the words that we use, we send our words into the universe and they create the future that we will eventually step into. So one of the principles and insights that I teach is that transformation is one inch from your nose Hmm. because everything that comes out of your mouth, you will eventually see. So for instance, you take the butterfly. When the butterfly is in the chrysalis stage or when it's in the cocoon, it spits out of its mouth what it lives in, if you think about it. Hmm. So if I understand that transformation is one inch from my nose, I have to be mindful of my language because my words create worlds. Wow. I just love that. And as I was reading this last night, I was thinking, wow, if people would take these 31 principles and actually do them and live them, they would live a brilliant life. So totally. uh, talk a little bit about Dare to be Brilliant. Dare to be Brilliant is the invitation to say either you create the future or it will be created for you. And men and women that dare to be brilliant are not waiting for the tap on the shoulder. They're not waiting for the check in the mail. They are getting up and saying, what can I do? What risk can I take? What am I going to do? do to totally go for everything I wanted, I, I wanted to have and stop waiting for it to happen. So daring to be brilliant is really that nudge, that push to say, you got this, you can do it. And on the other side of the dare is the opportunity to discover that you had it all along, that it was waiting for you. Yeah, you know, I remember when you were on my show about five years back, you talked about how you used to work for Walt Disney, Disney World. Uh, That's correct. And so here you are now touching all of these people. So you had to take a dare to to change. And that's why I started the first one. That's that's why I started the first one, because I took the dare. I took the dare to walk away from my guaranteed job with significant Disney stock and benefits. And I walked all away from it because I realized 15 years later that there was so much more for me to offer the world. And I'm so glad I did. And so looking at your life now, because you did dare to be brilliant assignment, or can you believe your life or what does that feel like to you? You know what? (laughs) It's so funny. We're having this conversation. I was, I was literally, I had a moment this morning, just a moment of reflection. Mm. And I teared up in the car because I'm just so grateful at 48 years of age to be in the situation that I'm in where I can travel all over the world and inspire people to really understand brilliant living. So I'm forever grateful. Yeah. And you know, for listeners all over the world, um, I I tell you so many people are thinking about or taking that jump or they're thinking about you know, daring to do something different. And uh, I I just remember your sharing about five years ago. And when I read your book and just sort of looked on your website, I'm like, wow, he has really changed. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what? You have to constantly evolve, right? So change or be changed by change. Uh, We've often heard that change is inevitable, but growth is optional. And I choose to grow. So what you saw five years ago, if I didn't change and evolve, I would cease to be relevant and I would be obsolete. So I'm constantly telling our team, how do we continue to reinvest back in the business? How do we upgrade our website? How do we upgrade our content? How do we build our community? How do we create a community? How do we stay connected to the community? How do we let go of what used to work so that we can embrace what wants to emerge? Yeah. Well, another uh, insight is hug your tree and bounce back. Okay, uh, why do we have to hug a tree? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's such a powerful metaphor because so many people, if you think about it, they have literally had their world uprooted. With all of the change that's happening in the world, McKinsey Consulting says that with by 2025, over 250 million knowledge worker jobs will be eliminated because of automation. And so that means people have got to reinvent, they've got to create. So when I say hug hug your tree, it's a metaphor to really hug the thing that makes you come alive, the thing that is your core expertise, that makes you a subject matter expert. And as the winds of change begin to blow, you hold on to the brilliance that you have within you 
and 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 decide what am I going to do to reinvent? What am I going to do to create the next chapter? And so I have a question for you. So would you say that in order to to dare to be brilliant, that you need to be an entrepreneur, a consultant, or can you be brilliant working in corporate America or working for someone else? Yes. So let me let me address that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can be brilliant in corporate America, but see yourself as a self-employed employee. Mm -hmm. See yourself as the CEO of your incorporated because newsflash corporate America does not love you. Corporate America will tell you one day that you are, you're a great person. They will give you a five-year pin, and then next week they will cut you off at the knees and say it's not personal, it's just business. We're just having a reduction in, in labor, right? So never get too comfortable to think that everything is guaranteed. So when you show up at your job, be the best at what you can do. Decide how you are going to be brilliant at your job. But keep one eye open and have a side hustle going on all the time. I'm <laughs> <That's>, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, that that's nothing but the, the truth. And, you know, and another principle that I love is rejection can be the greatest gift in the world. And when I read that, I'm like, OK, come on, Simon. Uh, <laughs> tell us how to deal with that because so many people are dealing with rejection you know in relationships what they thought would work what they thought where they thought they would be so expound on that for listeners so let me give you the backstory. okay for about 10 years i was submitting a video to the million dollar round table which is a very prestigious organization uh to speak to and anyone that graces the stage, their career is literally made. Well, for 10 years, I had submitted a video and they rejected me. They said, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. 10 years straight, I would get the Dear John letter. And eventually, I stopped trying and I gave up. And my assistant said to me, what if you go and get a coach? Maybe a coach can help sharpen and smooth out the rough edges hmm. that you have. So sure enough, I did. I invested in actually two coaches for a solid year. Well, sure enough, when I videotaped the next presentation, they came back to me and we submitted it to They came back to me and they said, we've seen the growth and we're saying that you are now ready. Would you come and speak to 9,000 of our top customers from 72 nations? And what I recognize, if I would have never really embraced the rejection mm -hmm. and seen it as a gift, I would have pouted. I would have just said, you know what? They don't like me. Uh, it's it's all it's a good old boys network, yada, yada, yada. I would have came up with all of these excuses as to why I didn't get it instead of focusing on how I could get better and put myself in position to succeed. So rejection is the greatest gift because it invites you to grow. It invites you to see things through another lens, not just the lens of what happened. And then you make up a story about what happened. It's it happened. And what did I learn? Re yeah. Rejection is a teaching. It's a teaching moment. So for somebody, I can hear my listeners who might have been in a relationship and they thought it was going to work. And maybe that person decided, I don't want to I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. That's a lot of pain. So are you saying what what should they do in the area of rejection? Uh, yeah. So I, 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 I know that well. The mm -hmm. first thing you have to do, there are three things. The first thing you have to do is when you experience rejection in a relationship is to recognize that it happened. And whatever happened, you have to forgive and let go. Because mm -hmm. if you continue to hold on to what happened, you build up a story and it will prevent you from moving into your next season. So forgive yourself and forgive the other person. And number two, recognize that because of the rejection, either you did that person a favor or, or you did them a favor. Mm -hmm. Because for whatever reason, it didn't last. Uh, there are people that come in your life and there are people that come through your life. Mm. And there are people that come in your life for a reason and a season. And sometimes people that come in your life for a season, we try to make, make up a reason why they need to stay. And they are past their season and we need to let them go. Because if we don't let them go in our head and our hearts and our minds, sometimes you can, you can get out of the relationship, but that person has left an emotional footprint in your life that you can't move on to the next thing. So recognize however the relationship went down, you did them a favor, they did you a favor, you move on. But then the third and probably most important thing is to understand that there comes a time in life when you recognize that it's, it's time to grow. 
And mm. sometimes you can have a 50 by 60 dream or aspiration, but you're in a relationship that's 8 by 10. And that 8 by 10 relationship causes you to shrink down instead of rising to the occasion. So the thing to think about is people don't see you as you are. They see you as they are. And if that relationship is not moving you forward to be able to grow and to become the person that you're meant to be, then you have got to let them go. You've got to bid them adieu, and you need to establish a catch and release program. Wow, that came straight from your heart. I felt that. Wow, Th- that was very powerful. So, so another principle you talk about is flip the script. Yes. Oh yes. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> did you like that one? I did. Expound on that, Simon. Terrific bell. <laughs> yeah, so flip the script is is understanding and, and and I'll set it up with, with this particular story. Okay. What I when I was fifteen years of age, I attempted to commit suicide. Mm. Um someone told me that I was ugly, I was black as tar, I was nothing. And it cut me really deep, so much so that I ran home. And I got my mother's keys, went into the garage, and put the key in the ignition with the garage door closed behind me and prepared to turn the ignition. And something said to me, don't do it. And I I took the key out of the ignition, walked back into the house, was a little bit bewildered, never told my mother uh, or father at all ever about what had happened. But what I recognize is I someone saying that to me that I was ugly, that I was black as tar – That was their own issue, but they found a way to make me feel bad about myself, and I carried it for many, many years. And what I recognized when I flipped the switch, I have to realize that that someone's opinion of me does not determine my reality unless I empower their words to be real for me. And the moment I begin to forgive them and forgive myself, I experience the breakthrough. Because what I recognize is you can never take people to a place you've not been yourself. So it's one thing for me to say flip the switch. It's another thing for me to get in touch with my own business and say, how am I going to let go and flip the script and create a new story of where I'm going? That's very powerful because, you know, Simon, you and I both have been around people. You see them 10 years and they still saying the same thing. And you try to hide from them when you go in the grocery store because, you know, they're going to be saying the same thing. So for listeners, one way that they can really begin to create an awesome life is to create their own story, decide what they want for themselves and begin to talk it and and say it and see it, et cetera. So, so is that kind of what flipping the script is? Totally. Absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. And then I want to back, talk about kindness will impact your bottom line. Kindness is the new greatness. So many times businesses are focusing on advertising their way into people's head and hearts. And it sometimes it takes the jaws of life to open up their wallet, right, to get them to mm-hmm. spend. And what I'm saying is when people deal with your business, you can be self-employed, you can be an entrepreneur, you can work in a business, you can own a franchise. What would it be like to make sure that kindness permeates your culture? And what I mean by that, from the way people answer the phone, to the way people respond via email, to, 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 to the way people engage you as they do business with you? Do you come from a place of kindness? Because if you do, that person in the recommendation economy will begin to yelp about you, will begin to tell their friends, unbeknownst to you, about the experience that you've created for them because you've come from a place of kindness, a place of love, a place of joy, a place of service. And when people authentically sense that you're not trying to get something from them, but you're trying to give something to them, they recognize that kindness is the new greatness. It's the new edge in business. And so in business, I know you have one on over deliver. So you are kind to your clients. I mean, I watch Absolutely. You. Yeah. Yes. Very kind. I greet my clients. Um, some of them I've known for a while. I give them a hug. I send birthday cards on the anniversary date. If, if we know uh, when they first started working with us, we reach out 
on the anniversary date to say thank you so much for doing business with us. We touch them throughout the year, if not by phone, by email, by text, by video, uh, just to let them know that we are so appreciative. That's coming from a place of kindness. Kindness is understanding how do you begin to help and serve people when they can do nothing for you. Mm. And, and, and when you have that spirit, <laughs> they will pick up on that you don't see them as a transaction, you see them as a relationship. So instead of people trying to hustle people on the internet and all of those things, uh, you know, just being kind, like you, I over deliver. And let me say about your office, your assistant has just, in coordinating this, you know, she was so kind and just so detailed and just just like you said, delivered uh, to me personally in a very professional way. Well, we really try hard. She's been with me. Melissa's been with me for almost uh, 12 years of the 15 years since I've been out on my own. And uh, she is the living embodiment of everything that we teach as it relates to being brilliant. So you got to give her a raise now, Simon, after, after uh, all that. She will, she will <laughs> listen, listen. She will listen to this and she will hug you. She'll say, thank you, God. Thank you so much. Well, I wanted to share that with listeners simply because you are living that. And so many yes. people are about, I got to make more money. So, so you're big on serving and giving and over-delivering. Always over-deliver without having your hand out. And ultimately, you understand that an open hand is always full. An open hand that seeks to serve. An open hand that's not looking to get another dollar, a penny, or a quarter. But that open hand that says, I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to go the extra mile, not because there's a dollar figure attached to it, because it's the right thing to do. And when you do it, people can sniff that a mile away and say, you know what? I am going to do extra. I'm going to go above and beyond. For me, what I do is I go to restaurants, and if I experience really, really great service, I automatically tip between 20 to 30 percent. And I don't say that to impress the listeners. I realize that that person has did something extra that they deserve way past the 15 or 18 percent. That extra, I believe, comes from a place of abundance because they went the extra mile for me. Yeah, you know, I just got back from Aruba. I had to get an additional tan, Simon. And so I see, I see. <laughs> you know, the lady who cleaned my room, uh, I mean, it was some days it was just a mess, swimsuit everywhere. And so at the end of the week, like you, from a place of abundance, I gave her a big tip and she almost started crying. And and Mm. I I, I did it out of love because she served me during that week. And so and and so for listeners, I know so many people like I'm going to start a business and what's my price going to be. So someone who's starting business, would you encourage them to begin to give and share and like you yes. plant that as a seed? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Totally. Pay it forward. Always. Well, I know you have a plane to catch, but we have about 10 minutes. I, I want to talk a little bit about celebrating the crumbs. Sure, sure, okay. sure, sure. Okay. So when I left Disney, one of the things that I did, my first big opportunity, well, actually, before I left Disney, I did a little moonlighting, was with a state agency And they only had $500 to pay me. Mm. And quite honestly, at that time, $500 could not even help me make my mortgage payment. Mm. So I, but I took it because I needed to get my training wheels. I needed to understand what it meant to be out on my own. And so I took it. And what I recognize is that crumb of an opportunity. I did the best I could. I Mm. showed up. That led to other crumbs. Uh, of of other doors that opened. So we went from $500 to $1,000. Then we went to $2,500. But what I recognized, I had to keep getting better every step of the way. And eventually, those crumbs became a loaf of bread. And that loaf of bread eventually allowed me to buy the bakery. And in buying the bakery, I recognized that I had to invest in talent. I had to invest in other people to help me get to this point in 15 years. So what I encourage everyone listening to us is despise not the crumbs of opportunities that may not look like what you think they should be, but hidden within them 
are gems that will strengthen you and position you so much so that when you get to the place, you can step through the door and they can say, this person is the one. So let me let me give you the what this looks like. Okay. I got a call from the CEO of Success Magazine. And Success Magazine has been around for 100 years and any of the great personal development experts from Jen Rohn to Zig Ziglar to Brendan Bouchard, Tony Robbins, all of them have graced the cover of Success Magazine. And the CEO called and said, we're launching an event, and this will be the first ever type of event that we are doing, and we're going to bring in Bishop T.D. Jakes, Mel Robbins, Brendan Bouchard, and the list goes on and on. I mean, it's a who's and who. Mm -hmm. It's a who's who. And, and they said, you know what? We would like for you to be a part of this very select group. And so I went, I participated in there, and, and I'm sitting at the dinner table the night before the event around all of these people that I have tremendous respect for. I was very humbled because I was just struggling with a, uh, a, a boy living in Orlando, Florida, by way of Buffalo, New York, somehow had snuck into the room and had a seat at the table next to the main guy. Yeah. And what I recognized is I embraced all the crumbs. I didn't, I didn't discour get discouraged with those crumbs. I, I showed up. I worked late. I did what others were not willing to do. And I did it when no one was looking. I was reading and studying and researching and praying and rehearsing and investing in coaches and everything. And all of a sudden, when I got the call, what I recognized, I was ready. And, and the next day, I went and delivered probably the, one of the greatest presentations of my entire life. Mm. But what I recognize, it had been 30 years in the making. Yeah. And 15 of those years was doing the work. So it will work if you work it, but you got to do the work. And doing the work is recognizing that the crumbs invite you to a new reality that is waiting to emerge. And as you begin to do it, you're on the bakery. Yeah. And my last question to you is what about God, spirituality and creating brilliant living? What role does God have in your life and, and in the life of listeners all over the world in, in creating a brilliant life? Well, without God, I am nothing. Without God, I would fail. Mm -hmm. Without God, I would be like a ship without a sail. So uh, the foundation of everything that I do, the thread that runs through it is is God because God is the end all and be all for me and I am so appreciative and grateful and thankful that I can live at this time in history and just be an example for all that he's doing in the world. Yeah. So Simon, tell people about your website. How can they get this book? I love this book. Uh, I'm going to really encourage my listeners to get it's an easy read. I love oh, the stories and I, I, I see all of the work and the thank time you. and the effort. So tell them about your website. How can they get this book and your other books on brilliance? So they can go to simontbailey.com, and that's how they can stay connected to us. Mm -hmm. And then they can go to Amazon, and at Amazon, they can order all of our books. We have an entire page on Amazon. We've written nine books now in 15 years, and you can get, get all of our books there. We also have it on audible.com. So I went in the studio, laid the book down myself, so you will hear my voice. So we're really excited about what Brilliant Living is doing all over the world. Wow. Well, what I can say is uh, you're powerful. When I saw you in Atlanta and sort of harassed you to be on my show initially, you were gracious enough to come. And uh, it's so wonderful to reconnect with you again. Thank you so much for having me. And we so appreciate you and all that you do. Well, everybody, once again, this is Constance Arnold. And as I say every week, you may not feel it or know it, but uh, you are surrounded by love because God loves you. I love you. And remember this, today is the best day of your life. You better believe it. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Hey, Atlanta. For a limited time at VisionWorks, you can get two complete pairs of glasses, frames, lenses, the works, for just $49 on single vision glasses and $89 on progressives. And that's a good deal. But we offer that pricing on over 500 frames, which makes it a great deal. 
Right now, buy two complete pairs of single vision glasses for just $49 or two pairs of progressives for only $89. VisionWorks, we're here to help you. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Offer expires November 10th. Hey, Atlanta. For a limited time at VisionWorks, you can get two complete pairs of glasses, frames, lenses, the works for just $49 on single vision glasses and $89 on progressives. And that's a good deal. But we offer that pricing on over 500 frames, which makes it a great deal. Right now, buy two complete pairs of single vision glasses for just $49 or two pairs of progressives for only $89. VisionWorks, we're here to help you. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Offer expires November 10th.